Welcome to Synthetic Oil Protection. We're back in the beautiful Pac and we're back with Veronica in her 2012 Toyota Camry. Now she's gone, went to the bathroom, but we're here with Patrick. He is our uh, mobile mechanic that came through. You know, it's, sometimes it's tough to find someone, but if you keep working at it, you'll find a good mobile mechanic. So this is actually a, a reference and a friend that she's already used before, so we're very fortunate. And Patrick is uh, Mobile Tech, is his exact name of the, the business, right? So Veronica's back, and uh, so now the great thing is we can relax and actually watch the process. And the great thing is when you have a mobile mechanic, you can go to the place of your choice. So this here being a park, there's a whole chin up bars and all kinds of stuff back here. And it's a, it's a, it's a safe place that a lot of people are around walking around. Yeah, and, beautiful um, souls out here. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, you kind of choose your, your um, destination and uh, you can get a chance to make sure it gets done right, which is always good to watch. You know, if you're busy, I understand, but it's so important to watch the liquid lube go in or the gold or the liquid cherry, whatever fluids you're getting done. So we also have the ATF fluid on her car right here and eventually we'll get that done. But today we're doing the coolant and I'll talk a little bit about this coolant just so everyone knows how it's different. So what makes this such a big deal is this is uh, biodegradable and also low toxicity so it won't hurt animals like the other coolants that go in uh, most cars. Also, this one's compatible with all other, other uh, water-based coolants. So basically any car you can put this in, including 18-wheelers, which is the long-life formulation, which is the toughest specification to meet. So this is good for the eight years and um, a million miles. And if you flip it around, we'll show them the back. And those are all the specifications and the ratios. So we're actually gonna be mixing it to the ratio we uh, desire for the best performance. So say you live somewhere hot, you can actually run um, a little more distilled water so you have more specific heat capacity. If you live somewhere colder, you can add a lot more coolant and that'll give you better cold protection. Hey, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. All you do is tap this little subscribe button. How do you don't have AMS oil on your car? Ah, that's an excellent question. So what I do is I call this vehicle the Tesla Rodsters, if someone asks. So basically, by not showing the AMS oil, it gets them to go to the channel. And then they discover what the channel is all about when they get there. So if you notice, I covered up any emblems of the manufacturer of who makes the car. They're all gone and basically it allows them to go and discover more about what the channel's about and what uh, what we show on there. Because a lot of people, they think um, AMS oil might be oil or someone might think it's motorcycle oil. Some other people think AMS oil is only racing two cycle oil for um, the open class. Like if you ever seen the, the hot saw chainsaw competition. Like I've seen AMS oil stickers on that. So some people think, oh, well, AMS oil is only two stroke oil, but they don't realize they have 300 other products. So when they go to the channel, they see all these products from the ATF fluid to the coolant to all these different things. And then they go, holy shit. I didn't realize I can run that on any type of vehicle uh, from a, a marine boat to a DCT dual clutch Ferrari. So people don't know. So we show all this on the channel and um it's so cool to see everyone's experience that's Just what we go with any kind of vehicle? yep any any type of atf that meets the specifications in the back so that's about 60 percent of all new fuel efficient atf is that specification <clears throat> we got some fluids flowing and that's a really nice thin little pan so we didn't even have to jack her up and so basically patrick reached down in there and turned this little teeny petcock we'll show you now all right, so the fluids are flowing. Now, what was that question, Veronica? Sure, um, so, like, how often should this coolant be changed? That's an excellent question. So, with an OEM coolant like Honda or the most Toyotas, it's going to be every uh, three years or 60,000 miles. But this one, this is a special uh, formula, good for 150,000 miles or six years on passenger cars. But on 18 wheelers, it's good for 1 million miles in eight years. So this is a special coolant that's way above and beyond. 
so your gaskets and all that will actually last longer on your car and you'll have less oxidation and this is where he reached down in that little teeny weeny pet cock down there and it's that little white valve that spins and that's where it's draining from and I can zoom into it right here there and I'll zoom in one more time that's the cute little pet cock and that's a little plastic valve that goes into plastic and it's got a little rubber o-ring on it and sometimes they can come all the way out and it drains quicker some just thread out and then they stop and so you just it's a patient process of letting it drain and then we'll be able to flush it out and put the distilled water in Patrick he just popped out this little reservoir tank there were just two little 10 meter millimeter bolts that hold it in and now you can completely rinse and clean your bottle and it's always good to clean it up get all that dust off so you don't have all that um, stuff just keep building up <laughs> and it kind of builds up on it over the years and that is where you fill the radiator in the top and then the little bottle sits right there we learned something new Patrick said he got this as a water heater pan at Home Depot so it's real nice low profile Ooh. and that coolant looks pretty darn good it's uh definitely better than most cars I've seen so that's one of the better looking coolants and uh, cool. and now we're just running some straight water through it just to cleanse it a little bit and Veronica is going to start the motor with the heater on high and that's going to circulate the heater core Yeah, it's running a lot clearer, yeah. I would say maybe close the valve and um, maybe fill it all the way up and then... All right, so we're just filling her up. And we're gonna fill her up until she overflows and then drain her down and we're just gonna make sure she runs nice and clear. So Veronica is just gonna show you how to put the heater on high. So when you're doing the coolant, it's best to uh, put the heater on high so just point to where the heater is. Right here. Right there, and then the fan's on high, and that's it. And what that's doing is that's circulating the coolant through the heater core, which is a separate radiator, and that pulls the heat and air through to warm the heat coming out of your vent. So that's how the, the heat actually comes out hot there is because it circulates through that. And when we put the uh, Dominator coolant boost in, that little orange bottle, that's actually gonna increase the temperature of the air coming out of your vents. So it's gonna be even hotter in the winter and your car is gonna warm up significantly faster. Patrick brought up a great point. He was saying most people use which one? Presto. Uh-huh, mm. and they usually change it how often? 30,000 miles. Wow. So when you, wow. Think of, when you think of doing it every 150,000 miles or six years, whichever comes first, you know, it's uh, amazing. All right, we're pouring in the beautiful liquid, which is almost this gold color, not quite like motor oil. And it's got this beautiful, smooth uh, texture to it. And you'll kind of feel your motor actually rev smoother when you do higher RPM. It's very interesting. And um, we're going to be running about three quarts into it. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, make it about a 40 percent concentration ratio which veronica will be good to negative six degrees fahrenheit so she doesn't really take this anywhere that cold and um, what we found um even when you freeze this which we've done with the cryogenic freezer on the channel um it actually is very spongy so even if you did get it to say negative 10 degrees it's not just going to crack your block and it, it's actually kind of has a spongy texture to it when it does freeze but you wouldn't want to start it <laughs> if it's not going to circulate you don't want to start it like that so we're just going to kind of gargle her fill her up and um 
We close the little petcock down there real easy. You can see it right there. And you can almost reach it from the top, but that's our little plastic petcock right there, which is closed. Perfect. So we're starting her up. We got the heat on high just like before. And now that's going to circulate and suck some down in into the heater core. Yep, yep. And then we put in about two and a half quarts. So we'll, we're going to save a little bit for the reservoir. That way we can add a little bit of concentrate to this plastic reservoir so we'll have a good mix in there. And then he's just going to top the rest of the system off with distilled water. And the reason you run the distilled water is so you don't get any type of metals in your coolant like calcium and all these different uh, alkali earth metals. Basically they just, they'll eventually corrode the system and you can get frequency issues and all kinds of build up and crap like that. So that's why you always run distilled water and then the concentrate. All right, and now we're putting in our Dominator Coolant Boost. And this is the uh, tri-tiered surfactant. So this has three different tiers to it. Uh, super cold for when it's warming up. And this is going directly into the radiator. We're gonna put our uh, 10 ounces in. And also this uh, has a second tier for the mid-range. And the third tier is for super hot to pull your super hot operating temperature down. And it says like up to 25 degrees cooler uh, operating temperature. So you'll notice quite a bit of a difference on that, especially on warm up time. And that additive in straight distilled water, your car will warm up 54% faster. So that's over twice as quick just by adding that. If you're running straight distilled water, when you're running the concentrate with it, it's gonna be slightly below that, maybe 40 some percent, but still that's less time you're on idle up the less time you're on idle up, you have less time uh, having fuel contamination and you have less time having uh, basically wasting gas because when you're running rich and you're trying to warm up your car, you're spitting more fuel. So theoretically, over the long run, this additive will actually save you fuel mileage. All right, Veronica, I had a good question. So like, do you, does your mechanic that you have in order to do a coolant change, uh -huh. do they need to know about Amsoil products on, you know, in order to do it just because they need, you know, I don't know how yeah. much goes into what. Exactly, like yeah. Just calculate it yeah, so, so so they wouldn't because everything's on the bottle. So basically if you look at the back bottle right here, we're gonna show you this. Mm -hmm. This has the ratios all on it. So they can look right here to get the ratio. And then also on the Dominator Coolant Boost, this shows it right here if you hold that mm -hmm. it says dosage right here dosage straight water two ounces of coolant boost um, if you're in antifreeze mix add one ounce of coolant boost okay. so basically we added about one and a half ounces right in the middle because we're a little bit more towards the distilled water side on her car so we ended up running about 40% uh, concentrate 60% distilled water. Now distilled water has a higher specific heat capacity of one and the concentrate has a specific heat capacity of 0.6. So the more of this you have, you actually have more ability to hold heat in your radiator and have a better heat transfer. Now this gets the molecules closer to the aluminum. So basically if you think of these little air bubbles in, in water, because if you looked at water up close, it's not just water. There's air and oxygen and all these different things in there. This is basically getting the fluid to lay closer to the metal, which is called a surfactant. It gets it to lay closer to it. And when it's closer, you have that better heat transfer pulling that heat out. Yeah. All right, this is Patrick's info. If you want to reach out to Patrick, give him a buzz. This is what he's been doing for 30 years, I think, right, Patrick? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so give Patrick a buzz. We're gonna take care of Patrick, and it's time to go race around the block. Um, you know, I remember my dad would always tell me to double check the coolant to make yeah. sure it's, you know, good. Um, so, how often do you think I should be checking the coolant? Uh -huh. I, would, sure I would always visually check it every month when you check okay. your oil. Okay. So, you just come in here take a look make sure there's plenty of coolant check your dipstick 
and usually what I do on my car about every month. Okay, yep. cool. Perfect. So we just got done cleaning the outside of this thing, went through the car wash, and we reset the old uh, maintenance minder, yeah. which is just the oil change thing. Mm -hmm. But so how's, how's she feeling now? Yeah, she's a lot smoother, honestly. And like, I'm not just saying that, like literally, she's a lot smoother. So yeah, definitely grateful, you know, and grateful for my car. And um, yeah, it's so crazy. Even the coal, I mean, like, yeah, it's different. Sweet. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. All you do is tap this little subscribe. All right, so everything went smooth with Patrick, and uh, now we're out getting some driving impressions. Do you think changing the coolant also makes it sound it and go smoother as well? Yeah, especially on an older car, it makes a huge difference. So it just depends on how oxidized the fluids are and. So for every 18 degrees hotter a coolant or motor oil runs, it oxidizes at twice the rate. So like when your car runs cooler, your motor oil will last longer, your transmission fluid will last longer, your coolant, everything exponentially lasts longer because heat and oxidation is an exponential breakdown basically. And that's that's like a, the exponential ratio is 18 degrees. So every 18 degrees hotter something runs, it breaks down twice as quick. So how's she feeling? We drove about, what, a quarter yeah, mile? Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, I mean, the difference, the big difference I noticed was when you put the heater on and I was just standing outside my door uh -huh. a few feet and I can feel the heat. And I remember like, you know, when it's cold in Vegas and I would put the heater, it would take a while for it to get heated. So that was like the first, uh -huh. Um, difference I've noticed you know wow like it was like automatically that's awesome so that's pretty yeah. amazing yeah you know? yeah so it's it's amazing like on one of the videos on the channel it was a Honda pilot I, I timed it I think it was two minutes and 40 seconds and it got up to operating temperature so uh -huh. from starting a car at like I think that day it was 58 or 60 degrees out cool day and in like three minutes flat, it was up to operating temperature. So it's so cool when it does that. And also what I noticed with the, with the um, change in the fluids like this, the car not only is it warm up quicker, but as you're driving it, as it's warming up, it drives stronger. It just feels like it has more power when it's cold. Now this car never got cold because we ran it to cleanse all the yeah. old fluid out. So we never had a full cold warm-up mm -hmm. but that's what I noticed it's like wow when it's warming up it's like yeah I was like so instant I was like my car has never felt so hot <laughs> so now I'm, I'm pumped for you know when it gets colder out here in Vegas yeah and then we'll make a right at the light up here Closing notes we should tell them. Um, no, I think that's about it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, if you want to see everything else we did to Veronica's car, the engine flush, the uh, motor oil change we did to it, the fuel additives, everything we did to this beautiful Toyota Camry, go ahead and check out uh, this video here in the middle. That's on everything we've done to her car. And uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. You can subscribe here and let me know. I'd love to know. If you've tried a coolant change before, what was your favorite coolant uh, that you tried so far? Leave that in the comment section below. That's your ticket into the end of the month giveaway. And we will see you back next time. Bye. Right here on Synthetic Oil Protection. Cheers to protection, protection, protection. <laughs>